Welcome back to this great Return March anniversary special. In the first half of the show, we heard from Ahad Tamimi, joining me now via Skype from a contested Jerusalem, his IDF reservist and the chief political correspondent of the Jerusalem Post, Gil Hoffman. Gil, welcome to Going Underground. So you're uh, presumably covering the elections there at the Jerusalem Post. Many people are not going to know who these candidates are. They are going to know, arguably, about your justice minister appeared in this strange advertisement. But also... Who is she? I mean, because she's on the record as saying they have to die, the house is demolished, they can't bear any more terrorists. Uh, this applies to the mothers of the dead. And then we have Benny Gantz, who uh, was in the IDF during Sabra and Shatila. W what should we know about these candidates? So uh, Netanyahu still has a great advantage in this election. He's the most experienced candidate by far. Benny Gantz is a former chief of staff of the uh, Israeli Defense Forces. Um, and uh, he is someone who wants to make peace with the Palestinians. He is the candidate of the center-left in this election. Uh, Afshin, you asked specifically about the justice minister. So, look, uh, Ayala Chaked is an unconventional kind of uh, leader, and uh, she formed a new party. And in order to attract attention for her new party, she ran a provocative ad. When in the content of the ad was just talking about how the judicial system in Israel in the checks and balances between these different branches has taken too much power and she wants to have reforms and people can agree with them or disagree with them but they definitely noticed you were obviously in the middle east during the apac uh, lobby conference in the united states what are you hearing about uh, any deal of the century this uh, new deal coming from washington because we heard from david friedman talking about the complete annexation of the west bank as part of the deal uh, Afshin, what they're trying to do is to have a final agreement so there won't be any questions anymore as to who can build where, uh, as to uh, where the final border is going to be, what's going to happen with the refugee issue of the Palestinians, and uh, guaranteeing long-term security. From what I understand from the plan, in return for whatever Israel gives up, Israel would receive normalization with the Arab and Muslim world that's not aligned with Iran. A lot of what's going on behind the scenes would then become official. In return for what the Palestinians give up, they would receive the Middle East equivalent of a Marshall Plan that rebuilt Europe after World War II. We're talking about $9 billion that would be invested in building up that Palestinian state. Ahead of the elections, do Israelis feel completely isolated, though? I mean, they've had the UN report about 30,000 casualties in the Great Return March. The UN claiming possible crimes against humanity. We have the nation state law saying uh, Jewish people are uh, held in higher regard by the Israeli state than uh, other communities. Do they feel isolated? Actually, absolutely not. I Israelis have never felt more embraced by the world. Uh, you just saw Netanyahu returning from a successful trip in Washington that unfortunately was cut short. Uh, by the firing from Gaza and Israeli civilians. But uh, he received a, a tremendous gift from the president of the United States in, in, represent, in re recognizing officially Israeli control over the Golan Heights, which Israel's controlled for 52 years. Um, and uh, from Europe, Netanyahu has gone around uh, and uh, been uh, embraced by world leaders there, had trips to India, to Africa three times, became the first sitting Israeli prime minister to visit Latin America and Australia. Uh, the Brazilian leader is coming here to Israel next week. And relations, relations with Asia, uh, trade-wise, are Brazil, absolutely... Brazil obviously, Brazil, obviously, very closely associated with Washington. But I suppose the point uh, one would be making is the certainly the European Union here completely condemned the uh, decision of the Golan Heights, as did China, as did Russia, as did the whole world. Is, are Israelis not uh, uh, in some trepidation that only one group has defeated Israel, arguably, Hezbollah? Uh, they have said that the Golan Heights annexation is, uh, is out of the question. It's just not going to happen. Any fears by Israelis that Hezbollah could unite with other liberation movements to, uh, in effect, target Israel in its heartland, where Hezbollah has previously won in Lebanon? Uh, no, Afshin. Uh, Hezbollah has been tremendously weakened by the civil war in Syria, where they lost a lot of their top fighters. In Iran, their patron has been weakened by the sanctions put back by the world after Donald Trump removed America from the uh, JCP. 
POIN. Um, Israel's security is stronger than it's ever been, and Israelis feel less isolated than ever, even if the European Union decides to condemn and, and pretend as if Syria is going to go in and be a, uh, given back this area of land that the, after slaughtering its people. If anything, Europe just showed it, it, it still lacks the morality that uh, we wish that Europe would regain a, a, after World War II. And what about the new generation of politicians in the United States that call Israel an apartheid state that are getting more and more traction with the U.S. electorate, arguably? And, of course, we have Jeremy Corbyn here in Britain that has... Uh, uh, repeatedly said that Israel is a state, not only an apartheid state, but one that is obviously, uh, well, in law, it has to be said, uh, is uh, privileging Jews over other uh, communities in Israel. Okay, so first of all, in America, what you're seeing is, is uh, some fringes getting too much attention. Uh, you've got a couple of congresswomen who got elected. Uh, the overwhelming majority of the Democratic Party is solidly on Israel's side. Uh, the relationship between Israel and the United States will always be bi bipartisan. It's Israel's top strategic asset. What happened in Britain is that the fringe took over. The fringe took over the Democratic Party. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn is not someone accepted around the world. His views are extreme. The man embraces terrorists, who the European Union regards as terrorists, not me, uh, who murder innocent civilians. Uh, and the fact that the, Demo the Labour Party in, in England has elected such a disgraceful man, that anybody who voted for him should be absolutely ashamed. Israel's the consensus. Mr. Corbyn is the fringe. Obviously, Corbyn would presumably deny those kinds of allegations, but just there won't be any reaction to the UN saying Israel could have committed crimes against humanity, 30,000 casualties. Uh, Israel responded uh, in great depth uh, to how that is incorrect. And I think that if the UN wants to be an honest broker, they need to do a much better job of it. And we were seeing how, because of the United States, that's changing little by little. Uh, but the Palestinians certainly haven't been helped, neither by the European Union, nor by Jeremy Corbyn, nor by the UN.